All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great session with the presidential candidates of the fictional Common Sense People's Party. Now, after the entire episodes of the 2023 presidential election, many stakeholders and prominent Nigerians are beginning to urge Nigerians to be more confrontational if they want to have the country they desire. Just a few days ago, Labour Party's vice presidential candidate told Nigerians that no Supreme Court justice will give them the democracy they desire. That is, if they truly want democracy, they must come out and fight for it. And about a week before then, former governor of River State, Rutimi Amechi, said Nigerians do not react. He said, impose a candidate on them. Give them a man with fake certificate. Give them a thief and they will still keep mute. He said, for that reason, the political elites, including himself, will never do the right things. And he began urging Nigerians to protest and apply physical demonstration to their call for transformation. Now, a renowned economist and politician has told Nigerians that their docile approach towards followership will not work. He said, Nigerians sit back, willing to accept everything that the political class dishes out to them. He said that is why we are multidimensionally poor. He said that is why we can't have those we elected. He went ahead to blast the Tinubu administration, saying it is even worse than the Buhari administration. But before I show you the words of the professor of economics, let me quickly show you this video where this man totally took eye neck to the cleaners as we approach the gubernatorial elections. See the video. Well, to tell you the truth, um, I acknowledge the insecurity and it's a big component of uh, voter confidence, right? But the biggest letdown I see here is on the confidence people have on INEC as an entity. And in my own analysis, I believe that it would take INEC an upwards of 10 years to restore the confidence they so flippantly lost in 2023. And that's my own personal analysis, because you have to conduct at least two presidential elections to be able to convince the ordinary Nigerians that you are now ready yeah, for the Yeah, but, but I mean, it, it can be incremental. Yes, so you we, take we've it got, in We've got this election yes, coming up. Yes. And INEC has, is trying to put in confidence building measures. One of them is to say that if there is violence in a polling booth, polling unit, um, we will not count the results in that polling unit. It's interesting that they will say that because in one of our studies we found out something that is called selective application of violence. Mm. And what you call selective application of violence is if I am a candidate running for office, I should be able to know where and where I should you know, do well in terms of polls. I also will be able to determine where I will not win the elections. And in that case, I can sponsor my people to go in those opposition strongholds to cause Absolutely. violence. And so if you have an INEC whose template is we will not count anywhere there is violence. So we, we can go and disrupt the election yeah, there, so and then you in, won't count the election. You are not encouraging politicians to do election. Yeah, That's what it doesn't make selected. sense. It doesn't make sense to me. And I said this again, that INEC has to be conscious in, and again, it's not just INEC mm. now. What I've seen across Nigeria is this gradual decline in trust. And trust is a very big entity when you talk about societal cohesion. Whether you're talking about the judiciary, police, mm. it's declining. And then when you get to that, you don't longer leave things to institutions to manage. I'll give you an instance. By 14 minutes past 1 p.m. on the presidential election, the February 25th, INEC, we are still recruiting ad hoc staff in Anambra State. And we have evidence to this. And so where you can't do the basic mm. that we expect you to do, people have to now take an oversized interest in seeing and indeed policing INEC and other people to do their jobs. And this is where I invite Nigerians that we have to look at our laws, we have to look at participation. Gone are the days where you lay back and you expect the organizations to do their bits. Now you have to be involved in the process to be, make sure that even when you discover that they are not able to do their bit, that you encourage them and keep their feet to fire until they do that. Let me say this. I don't believe the people we have in positions of responsibility have the full appreciation of what people do when they vote. For instance, for a woman in the, take any community in Mango local government of Plateau State, when they vote, they are not giving you just votes, they are giving you their lives. Because shortly after that election, headsmen will attack. And they are looking at who do we call in the middle of the night that can save us. For the pregnant woman, they will go to the hospital and they will not find medical disposables. And for the other person, you might have accident on the road, and you will find emergencies. So when people vote, they are giving you their blood, they are giving you their life. And so what INEC is counting is, to me, is not mere ballots. 
They are counting the blood and life and sacrifices and aspirations of a nation. And then any time you tamper with that, it's a huge, huge letdown. You take this, for instance, our parents and your generation, of course, never really recovered from 1993. And after 1993, you saw a decline in civic participation. And 2023 was another watershed moment. And I don't expect to see decline in the participation of young people. But it's beginning to happen in our conversations. And what I say to that is that we have to keep going at it until we're able to get to that place where votes count. As mm. of today, it's unfortunate that people have to have this kind of discussions to talk about the confidence people have in the system. Because, take a, for instance, you take the risk and present yourself at the polling units. With all the insecurity, you know you stand a great risk of being injured, being hurt, being maimed, or even being killed. And then you still take that risk to come out and vote. Mm -hmm. And then after that voting, something happens along the way. It's not a good experience, and yeah. I encourage our policymakers to look into it. You heard that. The people have completely lost faith in INEC. And the people of Imo, Kogi, and Bayelsa know that to get rid of the APC, they must vote and defend their votes from the manipulations of INEC themselves. Now, let us look at the words of the renowned economics and politician, Pat Utomi, as he doubles down on the claims of Dati Ahmed. Look at how the paper reported it. Nigeria's major problem is docile citizens, Pat Utomi. Renowned political economist, Professor Pat Utomi, has lamented that the major problem of the country is the docility of its citizens, insisting that many Nigerians are just at home with anything ditched at them. He called on Nigerians to be dynamic and work on new approaches to hold government accountable, especially on their safety and general well-being. Utomi made the call on Thursday in Abuja at a national conversation on building a new value system in Nigeria with the theme, a public sphere conscious movement, a necessary starting point for the journey to redemption. He decried that the main problem with Nigeria is that the people are docile and not demanding accountability from the leaders and rather choose to accept a co-mean, that is, just take it like that and manage. He noted that, but this is not working. We are creating poverty every day and I think this is a moral burden. Look at what the Zambian president is doing. So we need to rethink what we want and hold the leaders accountable. The day that person shows up in that fancy car, walk away from him and throw eggs at him. We allow them to get away with what they are doing to us. So we need to have a new approach to holding them accountable. He lamented that the present administration is towing the lines of his predecessor and even doing more damages, as can be seen in the appointments of partisan persons as resident electoral commissioners, which shows that President Bola Tinubu does not intend to make the Independent National Electoral Commission work for democratic development of Nigeria. You heard that. Now, obviously, Amechi, Dati, and Utomi are urging Nigerians to begin to take to the streets in protest against decisions that clearly violate our constitution and democratic processes, just like we have seen in many other countries of the world. But I would like to add that these stakeholders also have a great role to play in that. Yes, Nigerians should go all out and fight for what they believe in, but they would need cover, they would need experience. When they are shot at and killed, like during the NSAS, they will need prominent men to speak up for them so that the whole world, the international community, can know and believe what is happening. That is where stakeholders come in. I'm not asking any big man to lead any protests from the front. All I am saying is that they can sponsor it. And of course, what they are doing now, talking about it, is uh, an important aspect of sponsorship. In fact, it is a major aspect of it. But concrete actions must follow. A revolution is not child's play. It's not something that people can just stand up, few numbers of people can just stand up, take the decision within a day and go and, uh, and do. No, it is something that when people begin, they face great resistance that will test their resolve. And if they don't stand, if, if they fall and the revolution fails, their situation might even become worse than it previously was. 
That is why we need these men not to just speak, but to act and make these things come to pass. Anyway, make I leave I'm here. Make I still enter town. <laughs> make I go get some Ogbunge political news where I go like. Why? Because now, because of now, now I did here. So, don't go away. Don't go away. Sorry, don't go away.